Welcome to Who's Your Homeland, an Indiana Department of Homeland Security podcast. This podcast discusses and explores the latest news and insights in emergency management and public safety. Join us as we engage with subject matter experts and bring you the latest on how IDHS is working to provide Hoosiers with a safe, secure, and resilient Indiana. Sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Today, we are bringing you an audio version of a four-part video series that delves into the mental health challenges faced by first responders. Both the podcast and video can be accessed on our YouTube channel and at dhs.in.gov. This first episode seeks to peel back the facade and learn about the real state of mental health in the firehouse. Now, let's head to the Plainfield Fire Territory to start this conversation. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joel Thacker, and I'm the Executive Director of the Indiana Department of Homeland Security. Today, we have gathered an expert panel to talk about a very important topic in the public safety community, behavioral health concerns for the first responder. IDHS and the State Fire Marshal deal primarily with firefighters and EMS personnel. So much of our conversation on this topic will relate to those stakeholders. However, trauma and mental health struggles are common throughout the entire spectrum of first responders. This is a group of individuals with higher rates of alcoholism and substance abuse, higher rates of suicide and depression, and increased risk of exposure to cancer-causing chemicals. The role of a first responder is an honorable one, although it comes with extreme sacrifice and exposure to very serious side effects that can be the difference between life and death. In this video series, we will work to identify the reality of today's firefighters and EMS workers and work toward a more open discussion of how society should be talking about the behavioral health of first responders. In the end, we wanna talk openly about solutions methods to help, and the dangers of keeping it all held inside. This is a series we're calling When the Smoke Clears. Welcome to our first episode of When the Smoke Clears. I'd like to thank the Plainfield Fire Territory for allowing us to use their fire station as a backdrop. And now let me introduce our panel of experts. Tony Murray, who is the president of the Professional Firefighters Union of Indiana, Steve Jones, Indiana State Fire Marshal, Dr. Bob Smith, retired firefighter and therapist who's been working with public safety personnel for many years, and Troy Clements, firefighter with Pike Township Fire Department. Our first segment is talking about the state of mental health in the firehouse. Now, I think a logical place to start in this discussion is to get some ideas Uh, from our panelists. Marshall Jones, how would you characterize the issue of mental health as it pertains to firefighters, not just in Indiana, but across the country? I know you've got 35 years of firefighting experience, um, but share your thoughts on things that that you've seen in your time. Yeah, we we know that statistically, uh, public safety has a a high risk of mental health. Suicide rates are higher than average of the regular population. Um, so statistically and personally in Indiana, we, we see suicides and mental health challenges within the workforce. Um, and I think we're, we're talking about it. We're, we're making it more known about the realities of the stresses that, that we face in Indiana as firefighters, EMTs. Tony, as in your role as president of the Union, you, you travel around the state. Can you share some of your experiences that, that you've seen uh, with this issue of mental health? Well, I think, uh, first of all, thanks for hosting this program. I, I think it's great to get this group together. Um, as I travel around the state and, you know, being involved in the fire service and EMS for the, uh, you know, a few decades now, um, one thing I've observed is that this is a shared issue. This is a shared uh, concern, I think, that has uh, always been here among us, right? It's just until recently have we, I think, decided to talk about it. Um, we do have challenges. And I think that, that um, as far as I can tell, 
because of programs like this, because of uh, people willing to talk about the issue. Uh, we're making advancements in this issue. We're making advancements. We're touching uh, the lives of our members and their families by uh, having this conversation and structuring programs that I think we're going to talk about, about how to assist our, our members across the state. Dr. Bob, you have a unique perspective. You know, you've been a firefighter, so you understand that. Sometimes that's a challenge for clinicians because they actually haven't, haven't done it, but you actually have. And now in your role of helping others, what is kind of your experience? Well, I think the fallout with this is huge. Um, suicide, anxiety, alcohol, alcoholism, and alcohol deaths long term. Uh, many of our friends have succumbed to chronic illnesses like cancer, alcohol abuse, uh, that are job related. Um, we, you know, we're battling relationship issues, PTSD, stress, burnout, and our retirees are uh, also needing our assistance. And Troy, we're, we're glad you're here. You certainly have uh, a very important story to share uh, with the group, and uh, we'll touch on that through um, different segments uh, of our program. But if you wouldn't mind, share your thoughts on, on the issue and, and your experience. I have to say, uh, first and foremost, thank you, you know, uh, at Plainfield and to uh, everyone here. Everyone on this panel is someone that I've known for a very long time and I truly appreciate and, and thank you all for everything you've done for me. Um, as far as mental health in the firehouse, it is definitely coming along. Um, it is a lot better than it used to be. In the mid 90s when I started as a volunteer, um, even as a, a new career firefighter in the later 90s that we really didn't talk about it. Uh, we didn't say anything. If you did say something about it, you were afraid you'd be put off to pasture or the firefighters just wouldn't come back. So um, I know the word suicides come up quite a bit. Um, and I personally have had four brothers that uh, I've worked with and three that I became very close with that uh, took their own lives. And um, tragically, that's brought the the issue more to the forefront, but it has gotten a lot better since people are willing to see that you can talk about it and still come back to work. You know, I think you, you talked a little bit about it, but what is the reason why it's so difficult to talk about in the firehouse? Although it's getting better, there's still a stigma, there's still challenges. What do we think are some of the reasons why firefighters still aren't fully comfortable discussing this in the firehouse today? I think that, that Troy hit on something, and you said the word, stigma. There's a variety of reasons, and, and, and one of it is, um, well, if you say anything about a concern that you might have, uh, then people are going to think that you're weak and that you can't do this job or that, you know, I don't know, do I want to go, you know, into an incident with this person? But I think we've come to the real realization, and, and if not, we really need to, that we're all human beings. We're, human beings aren't made to see and do the things that firefighters and, our, and EMS professionals do. It's just not supposed to happen that way. But we are wired a little bit differently. We take these jobs with um, the passion, I think, that's required to do it. But, but um, identifying at first, <laughs> first identifying the, that there is a problem helps us solve the problem. And I, and I think that that stigma, I think we're trying to break that down to say, you know, we're not meant to see these things. And um, by dealing with them professionally or, you know, at the bay table, whatever that looks like for or whatever the need requires, um, talking about it and, and actually addressing it um, isn't, isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and how you, how you do that. And, you know, maybe we'll talk a little more about, you know, a diagnosis or, or of PTSD or other types of, of issues. All of these things are treatable. But if we're, I think, looking at from the scope and through the lens that these are real things, they, they don't weaken people uh, and they are treatable and that we have to approach these things head on with prevention uh, and not necessarily prevention, but how you deal with things and how you sort through things. The other thing that I'll just say is I think that we identify uh, a broken bone or a flesh injury uh, from this job 
we, we just understand that's treatable, fixable, and you're coming back to work, right, after that heals. I think we need to look at uh, behavioral health issues the same way as we look at physical health, and it, and it really is all the same. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, uh, we, we look at ourselves as being tough. And there are certain things in our career because that we experience things that the normal population is, it affects us and we don't like to show that maybe we've been affected. And so when we go home from a hard day at work, we don't want our kids to see that. We don't want our wives to feel that. And I, th I think it's important to talk about it openly. And the stigma is uh, we, we, we need our families, we need the fire service, uh, public safety to understand is we all respond differently and we need to lean on each other um, so we can prevent some of the outcomes that we've seen. You know, um, as leaders, you know, what conversations should we be having in the firehouse? Or you know, as we're looking at, development of company officers and even, you know, chief officers, what are these conversations we should be having? I think the, personally, as a former company officer, I think they're the tip of the spear. I think if you have a lieutenant or a captain in a fire station that at dinner talks about this stuff, normalizes this stuff, I, I think that's a huge advantage. You know, our, our fire marshals behind it, our unions behind it, admins behind it. So there's really, I think that's the good thing we're seeing. Uh, I'd say too, just, it's like everybody else, uh, just being open to talking about it. Uh, just yesterday, I had the privilege to speak to a recruit class uh, where not a single one of them had any fire experience whatsoever. I think there was one that was a, um, a former police officer but he and I could relate after sharing a lot of the same experiences. And, and I told them, I said, you know, people look to us to solve problems and we're, we're very good at it. Our job is really is like the science of alternatives. And um, we fix things. And sometimes that when we find ourselves in our own little jam that, that we're um, afraid to ask for that help, you know, like, I'm willing to ask you to help me lift up somebody why can't I ask you to help lift me up, you know? And so them seeing from, you know, towards the end of the recruit school, and we spent, you know, about an hour and a half talking and uh, that they, you know, can come and talk to anybody. Not a, not a single person at our kitchen table is going to look down upon you and judge you for, for talking. You know, Tony, I think, and sometimes maybe firefighters feel like they can't because maybe they're going to be in trouble yeah. or there's, you know, some other type of consequence. Um, you know, have, have you experienced firefighter as, as the fear from firefighters from that standpoint? And what would you share as, you know, representing the, the professional firefighters union of Indiana? What would you share with those firefighters who are concerned with that? Yeah, Joel, I think that um, we all know somebody and, 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 and we can relate to these experiences, right? I, I think that, uh, sometimes we feel like, well, I don't want to get involved because I don't want to get that, you know, and maybe I see an issue. The characteristics have changed. How, you know, somebody that I've worked with for years is, is changing a little bit. I don't, I don't want to intervene. I don't want to ask too many questions. I might, I might get them in trouble. But, you know, the reality is if you don't express interest or don't show uh, um, interest in saying, is there something going on? Then that's the thing that leads to trouble. That is where the trouble, that's the path to trouble. Um, so really, it's, it's sort of the opposite. I think that, the, yeah, there is a fear of how much do I get involved? But as Dr. Bob said, I think this is, this is all hands working event in, in our service. Um, it's not one person, you know, depending on what badge you wear or how many years you have on. It's not just those people that have to deal with it. It's all of us that have to deal with it. It's, um, I think it's all of our responsibility. And, and I think to a large extent, and I think, Troy, you, you mentioned this, um, we have to look to those senior members too, to how are, how are they reacting to situations? Are they open? Are they, are they setting the example to say, yeah, you can talk about this. You, maybe you talk about it, you know, uh, taking a walk or going on a fishing trip or at the bay table or wherever, but, but talk about it. Maybe it is, um, you know, the discussion to say, maybe you need to have some 
professional you know consultation uh, I think that all of those things need to be open and I think that there's a culture there too that that we're embracing and I think in having open conversations that it's not about a chief's obligation to discipline it's about a chief uh, a, a, a company officer, uh, their union, their their buddy that they work aside. It's all of our responsibility to say, first and foremost, what can we do to help you? That's the first and foremost thing. I think just quickly openness for folks to talk. Everybody's addressed that. I think we're doing better at making the fire station, the fire station environment, better at making this okay. It's, I think it's it, mentoring, you know, that mentoring word comes to mind is uh, taking what you know in your experience and helping the next generation um, and teaching them to help somebody else, so. And Troy, kind of specifically um, to your story, when did you, when did you reach a point where you knew things had kind of gone too far and how did you finally find the courage to reach out? December 6th of 2020. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, I remember it every day. Uh, that was the day that it all just bubbled over for me and the world came crashing. And so there was a lot of guilt on my part, a lot of shame, a lot of shame. Um, just feeling really defeated. Uh, when, and when I ended up uh, making that phone call, which was probably the hardest thing I ever had to do, that last number on the phone to hit was the hardest, it was hard, um, was uh, about three o'clock in the morning, some random stranger, I'm pouring my heart out. And, uh, but uh, that's when it all came crashing for me. And I tell you once that, uh, I got some of it out, even though that person on the other end of the phone had no idea what I did as a firefighter. They were at least able to help me start the process of healing. And it's a long process. It's a, um, it goes over time. It just doesn't get, I mean, it's not like they wave a wand at you, but, but it's a process to get through it. And so that we can come back and be the dad, be the husband, be be the firefighter and the caregiver because there's a lot of people that love us and that's through that process is where i really learned how many people truly love me well that's going to be the end of our first segment of our mental health discussion join us next time on when the smoke clears as we explore the progress we're making across all of indiana and in talking about mental health among first responders and the barriers that continue to impact that process. Until then, thank you for joining us. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hoosier Homeland. We've only begun to scratch the surface of this critical issue of mental health among first responders. To learn more about this topic and find resources, visit on.in dot gov slash responder dash mental dash health stay tuned for our next episode where we will continue this vital conversation this podcast has been a production of the indiana department of homeland security if you enjoyed this episode our full catalog can be found on spotify youtube and pandora to listen to previous episodes go to on dot in dot gov slash hoosier homeland you can follow us on facebook and instagram at indiana dhs we will see you in the next episode until then stay informed stay prepared and take control of your safety